everybody, it's Lizzie with Stitch People, and I am here to share a big tip with you. Oftentimes, we have people writing in asking us repeatedly about the half stitches that are represented in Stitch People patterns in various ways. We have both the diagonal half stitches, we have uh, the tall skinny rectangular half stitches, and we have the two to one ratio diagonal half stitches. Um, I will show you how to do all of these in this video. So sit tight and pay attention and hopefully you will have an easier time completing these stitches in all of your cross stitch portraits. I promise you it's a skill worth learning because stitches like this can really help you customize the look and the feel of your portraits, sometimes even just a little bit of a difference in an angle can make a world of difference in your portraits. So come along and learn this new skill and apply it in your Stitch People portraits. And don't forget to post your finished portraits online, um, tagging Stitch People in them so that we can see your finished work. We'd love to see what you come up with. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to stitch is this female hairstyle on page 37 of the women's hairstyles. It's in uh, column F and number four for the row. So this particular uh, pattern is something I wanted to show you because of these vertical half stitches that take up a rectangular vertical portion of the square and then they also have these diagonal half stitches that take up a diagonal corner of the square. So using this pattern I'll be able to exemplify, there we go, two of the half stitches that are shown throughout the book. So here we go. Okay, so I've set my book up back here and I'm gonna have my work right here so that I can switch really easily from showing you what I'm working on to what the pattern says we need to do. Um, so here's what I've got. I've got most of the face worked out already and the majority of the hair, but I don't have any of the half stitches in except for a couple of, I guess just one and two of these little um, flesh colored half stitches making way for the sideburns. So first of all, I'll switch the pattern here. I'm gonna start with these two, um, these two diagonal half stitches here. In my estimation, all they need to be is little slashes, if you will, just little diagonal stitches. I'm gonna start at the top right area here and just do those diagonal stitches. I think that is plenty. Um, some people argue that you need a vertical stitch here and a horizontal stitch here. I think that looks a little bit chunky in this context. So I'm just gonna leave these exactly as they are, diagonal half stitches. Now, if you look at the pattern, what's coming up here is the tip of the hair. I've got two diagonal half stitches coming to a point. And you'll see, um, as I complete those, I am going to want to fill that in a little bit. I'll fix my book in just a second. So here we go with this. There's one diagonal half stitch coming to a point. And here's another diagonal half stitch making that point. And in this case, I do think there is a little bit too much space uh, between these diagonal stitches. So what I'm gonna do is just fill that in with a vertical stitch. So let me add in that vertical stitch and show you what I mean to kind of fill in this space a little bit. Ta-da! I think that fills it in pretty beautifully. Um, then, let me uh, readjust my book here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the um, diagonal stitches up here. Now this is where you can use your creative license a little bit. So if you're stitching a person whose hair is a little bit more spiky on top, you might want to just stitch these as diagonal slashes just like we did on the sides of the hair. Um, if you just leave them kind of open ended, that gives the look of a little bit spikier hair like this, just kind of leaving them, leaving them as they are. You could also sort of round it out and give them um, vertical stitches to kind of make a more triangular shape so that the hair looks a little fuller and a little less spiky. I'll do that now and show you what that would look like. And again, this there's no right or wrong way for, for this particular context. Um, I would say there's no right or wrong way for, for any of the half stitches. It really just depends on what pattern you're doing and what is the most appropriate. So there you can kind of see it, it fills it in a little bit. Now I'm going to fill in the sides of the hair. Back here again is our pattern. So I'm going to work on this side and then I'm going to show you that little spiky guy. So we have one diagonal stitch. ta -da! Fills it in pretty nicely. Let me change my focus. There we go. 
And then I've got the little spiky going the opposite direction, and this just adds a little personality for this short haircut. And again, if you're stitching somebody who has a really, really spiky hairdo, you might want to just do a diagonal slash and leave it. Um, or if somebody has fuller hair, you may want to fill in this vertical stitch and do that way. So again, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna switch my threads over because I'm running out of room with this floss and then I will do the rectangular um, box style half stitches. So give me just a sec for that. Okay, so I have re-threaded my needle. Hooray! I have more floss to work with and now I'm gonna show you how to do these um, these kind of sideburn stitches and these um, non-diagonal half stitches here. So I'm going to start on the right side and basically all this is is creating a a skinnier cross stitch. It's, it's the exact same method of creating a cross stitch but instead of using, I'll go here in the middle here, instead of using one, two, three, four holes you just use two holes and you go outside the holes of the um, Ada fabric to kind of create one that's half as wide. So our first one is going to be right here and I'm just going to poke my needle right in the middle between two holes of the Ada fabric. So um, I've got a hole got a hole here and I've got a hole here. I'm just poking my needle right in between them, right in the middle. So that's, that's all it takes is going straight through these threads. And um, because of the way Ada fabric is created, you should be able to go straight through those threads there. I'm just going to make sure I'm not pulling my floss through too, too far. And now I am going to utilize a hole in the fabric to um, create the edge here of my stitch. I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to use another hole just above the first hole. And I'm going to catch the tail here of my floss. Ciao. And then I'm going to create my fourth. Oh, it looks like I pulled a little too much. I'm going to create my fourth hole, again, just pushing straight through the um, Ada fabric. Let me put my needle in there. I'll focus up so you can see exactly where it's going. It's straight in between two holes of the fabric. And I'm going to pull that through. And there we have it. Then I'm going to move down and do the same thing for the next sideburn. Because I'm, I'm moving quickly and working around a camera, I did pull a little tail through. If this was a portrait, I would, I would go back and fix that. But since it's for the video, I'm not going to take the time to do that. Um, here, I can use kind of that hole I already punched through. And then I just have to create one new one. Because this one shares two stitches. So that's pretty cool. A little less work. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to check in with my pattern over here. I have one little side burden stitch to do. If you look closely, I've already created the half stitch of the, um, um, the flesh colored floss. And all I have to do is do another half width cross stitch in that square to create the little side burden effect. So I'm going to use the top right hole of the fabric. I'm going to use the shared hole that I've already made uh, with the flesh colored Ada, I'm sorry, the flesh colored floss. I'm right in between two holes of the Ada fabric. It's going to go right down in there. And then we'll go up and do another in between hole that I created when I made the, the flesh colored floss. I'm just going to kind of pull my floss aside there so it doesn't bunch up. And there you have it. So now we've got some, some side by side two tall, narrow cross stitches creating that side-by-side -side half stitch effect. And we've got two over here creating that half stitch effect. We've got diagonal stitches creating half stitch effects. And two diagonal half stitches coming to a point with a vertical stitch to kind of fill in the space there. So you can kind of see how that's all coming together to create uh, the the effect of this particular hairstyle. And you can see what a difference those stitches make. Um, I won't explain what I'm doing, but I'll quickly just repeat what I've done on this other side, just so that you can kind of watch and, uh, and see how that's done just one more time. So I'm going to create this half stitch, go in between the holes here of the fabric, go 
come out in between the holes of the fabric and down the hole of the fabric and to get between the holes of the fabric just sort of forge my own way go into the holes of the Ada fabric this one I don't have to forge my own way because I've already done it in a previous stitch shared hole and then into the Ada fabric and then here's going to be that half and half. Use the whole of the Ada fabric. Half and half. And then whole of the Ada fabric. And a half and half fold. I'm trying to come at it from, from above so you guys can see what's going on not helping my aim at all <laughs> so there we go so now we've done that uh, that hairstyle and all we're missing as far as this pattern is concerned is the mouth and the little half width stitch ears on the sides I didn't want to do those um, to, so that I could more easily show the uh, the hair and the contrast there so there are two types of half stitches one of which is diagonal and one of which is just a vertical thinner you know narrow cross stitch and now I'll move on to a different style okay so the next pattern I'm going to do is, uh, let me just find it, this guy right here. Um, the reason I'm going to show him to you is because I'm going to show you an alternate way to do these uh, vertical rectangular half stitches. And I'm going to show you how to do these diagonal half stitches when there are two colors in the same square. So in the previous example, it was just uh, over the Ada fabric. And in this example, there's the hair color and the flesh tone color represented in a single square. So I'm going to show you two ways that you can do that. So here I have my uh, my head mostly stitched. Um, I've got the half stitches done on the right side as we just learned with this example here. I've got my half stitches on the right side but I've left them undone on the left side so that I can show you an alternate way of doing them. First I'm going to do these little um, bangs that come across. So the first style you can do here and again this is going to depend on what your character looks like, the person you're actually representing, how full their hair is and their hairstyle. Um, but what I'm going to, what I've done is you can see in the pattern here that the, I'll pull this up here, in the pattern here um, we've got we've got little bangs going on and uh, we've got two uh, two styles. So either what we can do is for this first one Oh my goodness, I keep dropping my needle. For this first one, I've actually completely stitched a full cross stitch of the flesh tone color. Um, you can see that if you look really close, there's a full cross stitch there ready to go. And I'm just going to use my needle that has the hair color in it and stitch one diagonal right across the top of that completed cross stitch. And it'll just kind of look like a little wispy hair. Uh, right across the top. You'll see uh, th that there's skin tone visible on either side of it and it's just kind of just a, like a little piece of hair that's hanging down. That's one way to complete that style stitch and again that's going to just depend on what your specific character looks like in real life. Um, the other way to do it, I will show you close here, is I've completed a diagonal half stitch of the flesh tone color but it's just one diagonal little stitch I didn't do anything else and um, what I'm gonna do here is show you the second way of completing this diagonal half stitch which is to share this square with the existing color because again in the pattern it shows two colors a little triangle of or um, well in this pattern it was black but in my Example would be a triangle of orange and a triangle of the flesh tone color. And what I've already done is this diagonal flesh tone color stitch. And now I'm just going to create a diagonal of the hair color. And as I pull this tight, I don't want the hair to lay on top of the flesh colored um, floss. So I'm going to use my fingernail and kind of pull them apart. I'm going to use my fingernail to push the flesh tone color as I pull the hair color and kind of keep those things separate so that they lay side by side and share the square. You can see that there. They lay side by side and they share 
this square here, as opposed to this style where I created the full cross stitch of the flesh tone color and then just did a little wispy diagonal over top of it to create the effect of the bangs. So hopefully you can see um, the difference there. I would argue that there's not really enough room to do two full triangles. I don't, I don't typically do a vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. Um, in either color, let alone both colors, because I feel like that results in a bit of a chunky look. And I think if done correctly, if you separate these flosses as you pull them tight, um, it, it is plenty of coverage there to, to look just the way you need it to look. Now, um, on this left side here, on my little face, I'm going to show you the alternate way to do these stitches. So in a lot of the patterns, you'll see that there are sideburns, there are ears, there are little um, examples of these half stitches all throughout um, the book and again this is going to depend on your specific character and what you're doing but you can either the, complete them in the way that we've already illustrated which is to do a full um, cross stitch two diagonals one over the other but just in half the space or if you want some some um, color there like on the side of this this character's head maybe you do want some extra hair kind of fluffing out the sides but you don't want it quite as thick, you can just do some vertical stitches. Sometimes that's all you need to get the effect that you're looking for. So I am going to create just vertical stitches using the holes of the Ada fabric so that you can kind of see the difference. It's going to be a similar effect where the hair kind of goes alongside the head, creates a little bit of a sideburn effect, uh, thickens the hair up at the top as well, but it's not quite as thick as what's on the other side. So here you can see a good side-by-side -side comparison of what a thinner um, example looks like and what the thicker example looks like and um, again just depending on what your character's needs are you're gonna have to be the judge of which style is gonna be the most appropriate sometimes this style here on the left that I just showed you is a little easier when you're doing a sideburn so let's say you've stitched out the face and you've stitched out some ears um, say there's some ears back here and you need a sideburn to go over top the skin sometimes just one little uh, vertical stitch is all you need and it's gonna going to achieve the perfect look. So there's an example of how to complete a different style of that vertical half stitch and two different styles of this um, diagonal half stitch where there's two colors in the same square. So let's move on to another style of half stitch. Okay, for the next type of half stitch, I'm going to use this pattern here to show how to do the diagonal half stitch shown in the vest here. So we've already learned how to do a two color diagonal half stitch that just utilizes the single square of the Ada fabric. Um, but we're going to talk now about how to do a two to one ratio stitch. In this particular case, we're going over one stitch and up two stitches. And likewise, in all of these are two squares high and one square wide. So I've stitched a little suit to start, you know, the beginnings of a little suit on this guy. We've got his blue shirt, a darker blue tie going on, and then I've got his vest all ready to go around those areas with the exception of the diagonal stitches. So in this particular case, I've decided to stitch the entirety of the blue shirt and the tie. Um, I've, I've done full cross stitches with three strands of floss. And then over top it, using my needle and thread here, is where I'm going to do the two, two to one ratio stitch. So I'm just gonna find my hole back here because um, it's a little tricky to, uh, to stitch with this camera right here. So I'm gonna pull it through the hole of the Ada fabric and I'm gonna go down two and over one. And there we go. And then similarly, as shown in the pattern, I'm gonna go down two and over one once again to create kind of this deeper angle that's a little more sweeping. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that you can still see some light blue and some dark blue underneath. And a lot of people go, what do I do about that? What do I do about that? Um, this is kind of that, that time where I give you permission to be creative. And um, I'm gonna suggest another outside the lines approach here. So let me quickly re-thread my needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the hole of the Ada fabric. There we go. And I'm just gonna create a little, a little cheat diagonal, a little filler diagonal here, and just go right in between the holes of the fabric. Doop, doop. And that will kind of uh, just hide hide that, that space that we don't wanna see. So again, up here, I'm going in between the holes of the fabric, 
I'm gonna come back up and just go right in the hole of the fabric and just kind of create a little um, a little filler. So now you can no longer see the dark blue or the light blue in that space and it uh, creates that deep V of the vest going over the tie and the shirt. So I'll repeat it again down here. We go up two over one. We go up two over one. And then we can still see that light blue and dark blue uh, shining through there. So I'm just going to go through the whole of the Ada fabric and in between the holes down here and just kind of cover that up. I find that this works really well in general for stitches like these. Now, the majority of this blue and that light blue, the majority of these stitches is getting covered up. But in my estimation, if any of those color, you know, if anything is visible under these diagonal stitches that I've made, I want to see the blue and not the white of the of the fabric. Um, that's just that's my personal preference. So that's the reason that I chose to stitch these, uh, do the cross stitches of this dark blue, this light blue, this light blue, and this dark blue. Because ultimately, even though the majority of it is covered up, save for this, you know, these little corners peeking out, I did want to make sure that if anything showed through, it was consistent with the rest of the pattern. So that's why I did that. And once things get um, get pulled tightly and pressed and framed, uh, I, I don't think it's too chunky of a look. Sometimes you want to be careful piling thread upon thread upon thread, but uh, I don't think that's too chunky at all. So there we have it, the start of the vest for this pattern right here where we can see that two over or two up one over stitch. So there's the pattern and that's what it looks like when we are done with it. I also so. want to say with this style of stitch the, the two to one ratio diagonal stitch, you can um, create it like we created this diagonal stitch up here, where I did a diagonal stitch of the red hair and a diagonal stitch of the flesh tone color. You can do that in this case. So I'm just gonna kind of freehand that, um, what, what I'm talking about over here. So let me find a hole here. So if I was stitching the shirt, I'm gonna just get started. I don't wanna pull my tail too far, there we go. Okay, so it's a two over, or two down, one over diagonal stitch. So I'm gonna go one over, two down, do that here. And then I need to fill, fill it in a little bit. So I'm gonna use the whole of the Ada fabric. And I'm gonna go in between the holes up there to just kind of fill in that space. Okay, and then I'm just gonna swap out my floss. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I've done it with the shirt color. Now I'm going to use the color of the vest and do the exact same thing where I do come in the hole of the Ada fabric. I didn't pull my ends tight here, so I'm going to hold them with my finger. Oops, I pulled right through. My goodness, does that ever happen to anybody else? <laughs> pull that with my finger. Okay, so now I'm going to go over one, two up, and as I pull this one tight, I'm going to do just like I did over here with this guy, and I'm going to make sure that these stay separate. I'm going to just kind of pop my fingernail in there, pull the blue to the side, pull the gray tight, so that these stitches sit side by side really clearly and nicely, and one doesn't cover the other one up. But I do want to fill in that space, so I'm going to poke my needle back through, utilizing the holes of the Ada fabric. Pulling everything nice and tight. And then I'm going to go through um, and make my final hole poking between the holes of the Ada fabric. And just fill in that space. And then you get that, that shape of the 2 to 1 ratio diagonal that you see in the pattern. And that is another way to complete that stitch if you don't mind everything kind of being in a, in a diagonal fashion versus over here where we have the light blue underneath in a cross stitch pattern and the diagonal over top it. So those are kind of the two ways you can complete that, using all diagonals side by side or doing cross stitches of the one color and then going over top it with the diagonal of the other color, using your judgment as to which color kind of is representing the diagonal. In this particular case, the, um, the vest is, is the true diagonal 
uh, in real life, the shirt would just go straight down from the neck to the to the where it's tucked into the pants, and the vest would come over top, creating that line. So that's why in the first example, I created the shirt using cross stitches, and then I created the diagonals with the vest. But if you think that's too chunky or that uh, doesn't make sense to you, or if you just simply don't prefer it, you you can do it this way, where you do the the long diagonal and that kind of cheap filler in diagonal. So hopefully that is a little bit more clear for you. Now before I wrap up, I do want to mention that many of these stitches are outlined in the book. Um, on page 83 and 84, there are many, many explanations as to how to do these funny angled stitches, these these cheat stitches or these two to one ratio stitches, all sorts of stitches. And they are in context of the pets, but that's just because the pet designs have so many variations of these stitches. You can see here, for example, on this dog, we've got some, some side stitches going on. On some other dogs, we've got some, our Pomeranian design, for example, has some diagonal stitches. And, and for example, this is a diagonal half half stitch, but this is exactly what it looks like, where I'd come up through the whole of the Ada fabric here. And then I just, just like we went over how to do this style stitch, create a full cross stitch, or I I'd rather create a half size cross stitch that takes up half of the, of the width of the square here. I just do a small stitch that, uh, that pokes right through the holes of the Ada fabric right here to create that little rounded effect. So that's why I chose to include that in the animals area. But you'll see it goes over, you know, there's pictures on all these kind of outside the line stitches, all these ears that kind of go outside the lines and use holes that aren't a part of the Ada fabric. And there's some pretty serious explanations as to, you know, what these what these stitches would look like on your Ada fabric, both for the cats and the dogs. So it does apply, there's the same kind of rules or guidelines or whatever apply to the other patterns like the clothing and the hairstyles but it's outlined here on page 83 and 84 of the stitch people book so if you ever need a refresher be sure to check that out all that information is going to be there for so you so there you have it all sorts of new stitches that you can incorporate into your stitch people portraits hopefully you found this video helpful and useful i hope you'll integrate these new stitches into your portraits and please 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 share them on social media so that we can see what you've come up with we love to see your finished portraits thank you so much for supporting us we hope you're enjoying stitch people and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.